Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is a very, very important show, and I hope everybody's just going to sit, relax, get a pencil and paper, because I'm sure you're going, going to take notes. It's very hard to get people who are so busy on the show, but we were very fortunate to get Aaron Kobitz, who is Dr. Kobitz, who is Associate Director at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, I'm going to let Aaron tell us. So what is this incredible center down there in Miami. What do you do besides take help people with cancer? So thank you so very much. Um, the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center is comprehensive in that we focus on the continuum of cancer from prevention all the way to survivorship. So while treatment must, might be the thing that people are most um, familiar with, we spend a lot of our time thinking about ways to prevent cancer, ways to detect it early, and more importantly, um, to help people and their families who are living with cancer or navigating a cancer diagnosis achieve optimal quality of life. Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center is the only academic cancer center in all of South Florida, and we consider South Florida to be the four-county region that spans from Monroe to Palm Beach County. And as an academic cancer center, a big part of our mission is research. We believe that research cures cancer and that by doing research, we identify novel strategies to address that cancer continuum all the way from prevention to survivorship. Well, I have to tell you that I was so impressed when I went to a luncheon at, at uh, Boca, the Boca West and they had one of your chapters talking about what you do and what they've received. And, I mean, it was such cheerleading. I wish you were there. Mm. So I was actually with the Boca West Pop Corps um, group yesterday. Ah. I love the Pop Corps. Um, they are our biggest champions and cheerleaders, and we are so blessed to work so closely with so many women and men who are committed um, to our mission and also for advancing the idea of a cancer-free tomorrow. Yes, and, you know, before, and I, we will keep talking about this, but I want to talk about the outreach vehicle now that you've just created. This is probably the only one in, in the country. Well, I don't know that it's the only one in the country, but we believe that our Game Changer vehicle is, in fact, a Game Changer. And the reason we call it the Game Changer is because most cancer centers, as we started off the conversation, really organize so much of their effort around treatment. And this Game Changer vehicle shifts our attention to the importance of prevention and doing prevention in and with communities, many of whom are medically underserved and don't have ready access to recommended cancer screening that allows for prevention and earlier detection of disease. And so this vehicle is in the community. It is a tangible presence of Sylvester's commitment to being on the front lines for health equity. And it's really closing gaps um, in our local community's ability to participate in cancer prevention. My guest is Erin Kobetz, and she is a PhD, and she's Associate Director at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. And we're talking about so many things, but what what Aaron has just said is very important for people to understand. For research is great, and what it does, though, it it absolutely helps the screening. So if you are screened, then they know what they're looking at, and that apparently is what the game changer does. So I'd like you to walk us into that vehicle. Just tell us what one would expect if they, when they find this. So the vehicle is an RV, brand new. We worked really closely with the space and facilities team at the University of Miami to ensure that the inside could look like one of our clinical facilities. So you come in and there is a couch with a very large TV. The TV um, is an opportunity to provide some cancer education in multiple languages 
to share Sylvester's YouTube channel so people who interact with the vehicle can see some of the work that we're doing in the laboratory or in clinical care and clinical research in particular. And in the back, we have two consultation rooms, one of which is a very traditional exam room. It has, um, you know, an exam bed. And the other one is a smaller consultation room that we can sit with people and counsel them about their cancer risk and what screening tests for which they may be eligible and to talk to them about their health more broadly. And then when there are things that go beyond the capacity of the vehicle, for example, somebody has a long history of smoking. Well, in that case, something like spiral CT may be recommended. We can't provide spiral CT on the vehicle because it's a vehicle, but what we do is help navigate individuals who we meet who have needs that go beyond the vehicle's capacity to our partners throughout the community who have a broader range in health, of health and service, social service delivery. Amazing. And is this free um, for someone? Free. They come on the van. Is it free for them to be screened? Yes. Hmm. Amazing. So you have major donors, and I know that's what you just mentioned, the PAPCOR, and that's really, it's so unusual to have, I think there are 28 chapters, and of all these women who are so dedicated to you, and of course they must be out of their mind with thrilled and excited about this, because as you said, you're going to come up into Palm Beach County, Broward, of course down into Miami-Dade. So there's one vehicle, it must be on the road every day. So what, right, right now we have one vehicle. Um, that vehicle is focusing on Miami-Dade County because that's where I am. And so in launching a project of this scope, I felt really strongly that I needed to be able to pop in on the vehicle at any time to make sure that it was operating in a way that really reflected Sylvester's commitment to excellence. We recently received a gift from Florida Blue, and we are in the process of building the second Game Changer vehicle. The gift from Florida Blue specified that the Game Changer will focus on Monroe County, and I think that's incredibly important because Monroe County is in itself a federally designated medically underserved area, meaning that there is a true shortage of primary care providers available to meet the needs of Monroe County residents. And so the Game Changer is going to be a very critical piece of healthcare delivery on Monroe County. We are hoping that we are going to get Game Changer's vehicles, Game Changer vehicles for Broward and Palm Beach County. And one of the things that excites us is that we have this connection to the PAP Corps and other community groups who are not only interested in helping support the Game Changer concept financially, but are willing to share their talent and time for us to implement the vehicle um, in a way that meets the needs of these other counties and the, the individuals who live there. It's extraordinary. And for people who don't really know about the Sylvester uh, Cancer Center, Take a moment, please. It's really University of Miami. Miller School of Medicine is where you're located. Tell us a little bit about how it started, would you please? So I'm, I'm going to do my best to be a historian. <laughs> okay, well. Um, and, and I'm probably not going to do great justice, and so I apologize. <laughs> but the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center was created through a very generous gift by Harcourt Sylvester and his family. And I think the vision of Harcourt Sylvester was to create a world-class cancer center to meet the needs of South Florida residents. I think that Mr. Sylvester was ahead of his time in recognizing that cancer care and cancer prevention requires a very unique skill set. And in order to do that well, you need to be able to marry research expertise with clinical care such that the two are working side by side so that research discoveries can be quickly and effectively translated to the bedside for real impact. So he developed a gift, uh, he, he provided a gift, and I think the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, our building opened um, in the summer of 1992, right before Hurricane Andrew. Mm. And I um, was a high school senior at the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I do remember from my personal background, you know, just how devastating Hurricane Andrew was for those of us who lived in South Miami and the impact that had on our healthcare system broadly. So, you know, since 1992, the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center has been the only academic university-based cancer center in all of South Florida. 
and we have been trying to the best of our ability to fulfill and exceed the vision set forth by doc, by Mr. Sylvester and the other early supporters and founders of our cancer center. Um, you know, the most exciting thing that has happened recently is that Sylvester Comprehensive Cent- Cancer Center has applied for designation from the National Cancer Institute. The National Cancer Institute is one of the branches of the National Institutes of Health, and um, designation from the National Cancer Institute would put Sylvester into the group of, el- of 70 elite cancer centers across the country. We are anxiously awaiting our results, um, but we feel very positive about our application process and hope that we will be the only, um, well, we will become the only NCI designated cancer center in South Florida and the only, and only the second NCI designated cancer center in all of Florida. Well, I, I had heard about this and after understanding all that you do, I know that's going to happen and I know how long it's been years, isn't it? To, to prepare yourself for this. Somehow I heard it was 10 years that you, have been working on this? So it's, it's a little less than 10 years. Oh. Uh, our director, Dr. Stephen Neimer, was recruited to Sylvester about six years ago, and he was recruited with the single purpose of getting Sylvester NCI designation. And I'm so inspired by his leadership and the way that he organized, you know, interdisciplinary scientists and clinicians around a common cause, and that in September of this past year that we submitted a beautiful 1,300-page application that really speaks to our strengths as an organization and, more importantly, our commitment to South Florida being a beacon of hope for people living with cancer, being a research machine that, you know, facilitates novel questions being asked that reflect the needs of our South Florida community, and that all of the work that we do is ultimately disseminated to the community for maximal impact, because we recognize that it is a blessing to be the Academic Cancer Center for South Florida, and we want the work that we do to uniquely reflect upon and impact the needs of the people that we serve. It's an, it's an extraordinary goal, and according to anyone I speak to who understands the Sylvester Cancer Center, they they say, yes, you're fulfilling it. Well, let's get down to the mundane then. Let's talk about someone who calls you and they say, I think I have cancer. What can you do for me? Let's just give people an, uh, an idea. So if somebody were to call the cancer center and say that they thought that they had a diagnosis of cancer, they would be... Um, handled by our nurse navigation team. We have a very robust team of nurse navigators, all of whom are certified in oncology and work really closely with our patients, potential patients, and our clinical teams to make sure that anybody who has a diagnosis of cancer or needs a second opinion is timely and appropriately navigated to the right care provider and has all of the necessary tests and medical records prepared for evaluation by our medical team so that we can make appropriate decisions about next steps. So in other words, you're saying that if someone has already been um, told that they do have cancer, they could go to your institute for a second opinion. Yes. Um, And this is somewhat outside of the scope of what I'm responsible for at Sylvester. Um, because I really help lead some of our some of our research endeavors, I do help support a clinic called the firefighter called the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center Cancer Prevention and Wellness Clinic. Um, but Sylvester does provide you know care all the way from prevention to secondary second opinions for people who need it. Yes, it's um, it it is. Ex- I keep t- saying extraordinary because um, as a gerontologist, I have and I lived in Miami. As a matter of fact, I worked at the University of Miami, so I was very interested in what you said. And I was here during Hurricane, you know, Hurricane Andrew, and and it was horrible. And then you started it at that point, which was probably you had to take a deep breath about that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that was like, well, yeah, of course, a lot of people lost their homes. and, uh, And you have no reason to know this, but my husband was asked, he was a big urban planner, he was asked by the governor to go down and rebuild homestead. So I was very involved in that. But just getting back to what you said, when you talked about Monroe County, isn't that mostly the keys? It's mostly the keys. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, thinking, speaking about hurricanes, that Hurricane Irma came through and really yeah. decimated whatever healthcare infrastructure was there. And so I think that's why Florida Blue had the vision mm-hmm. that the Game Changer vehicle can be a, an important um, source of health information and health navigation and free screening for cancer, HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections in a community that so very much needs it. So hopefully they will lead the way, and I know you're working, uh, I know how hard you're working on finding some great donors for Palm Beach County and Broward, because that, and now that that is the next fulfilling um, a goal. And I know we have to figure out, anyone listening now, if you really have a lot of money or you have a lot of friends and you want to do something, it takes a lot to do research. That's, but that's how people are going to find the cure to cancer, but even in the meantime, until there's a cure, there's so many ways to help someone with cancer. We know so many people now who are living longer and and without and in remission. So it's organizations like the Sylvester Cancer Care Center. It's uh, at the University of Miami. Well, you um, you are a researcher and. So you, do you spend a lot of time behind microscopes? So I'm actually a population scientist. I was trained oh. <laughs> as a cancer epidemiologist, and I had the benefit of going to University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, where I also got pretty in-depth um, didactic instruction in intervention design and delivery. And so most of the work that I have had the privilege of doing for the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center over the past 14 years has been trying to understand what communities are at increased risk of developing and dying of cancer. I've been focused on cervical cancer because it is a preventable cancer. I then work with those communities to determine what risk factors and risk conditions drive the observed disparity. And then collectively, we develop evidence-based interventions to address the things that our research uncovered. Excellent. I do understand what you're saying. It's, I was just moderating a lecture the other day, and there was a, I guess uh, there's a doctor who she is a, um, uh, let's see, well, she is, uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly, She she's a person who had cancer herself, and and just a little bit, and then she realized that she is uh, going to really have some major cancer. So she uh, she did have her breasts removed and had mastectomies. And, and she was there helping and telling the, the people in the audience about this. So it's all that has come about because of the research and what people know and can expect, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And I think it's even more powerful when somebody has a lived experience with cancer and then they use their experience to educate people in their peer network or in their community about cancer and the importance of early detection of disease and also serves as a support as somebody is trying to navigate the complexities of cancer treatment. It's a very beautiful thing, and that's why a lot of the work that we do at Sylvester involves community stakeholders as our research partners because we believe strongly that the best way to address cancer risk in communities is, for, is to allow those people who live in communities to articulate the barriers and other challenges they perceive um, to optimal health. So early detection is the key, and that's why the van, that's why your, the mobile unit is uh, so important, because, if, because you know enough signs and you know from family history what they have to look out for. A lot of people are not aware, and especially people in low-income communities. So I admire what you're doing. I know it's probably going to help a lot of people, and it's uh, extraordinary for people to have, for us to have this here in South Florida, and I applaud you, as I said again. So uh, for people, do you have uh, age limits? I mean, if our children... We don't. I mean, we we don't really take care of children. Uh Um, Yet, I mean, our goal is ultimately to be able to provide HPV vaccination, um, which would include children. But right now we're serving anybody who's 18 years of age and older. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, because I always ask. And we're starting that. slow. We were dreaming big, but we're starting <laughs> slow. Dreaming um, big because you, slow. Because you, you know, you realize that a project of this, um, you know, can't be all things to all people. But in a context where there's so much need, we want to have the the flexibility and be nimble enough to meet that need in a timely manner, but to do so in a way that reflects our understanding of science and what's appropriate to do for certain age groups and certain communities. Um, given how cancer is distributed and where there are opportunities to effectively intervene to change patterns of risk. Yes. Um, Do you also go to events? In other words, we have big expos twice a year, and we have had some vans come there. Is that something that you would ever consider doing to have it we for the day? We would definitely consider. We would oh, definitely good. consider good. doing that. Doing that. We just need to know when, with a little bit of notice, because um, this is a unique resource for South Florida. There's a lot of demand and interest in having our game changer vehicle attend, and we want to be in the community. We want to be a visible presence, um, and we want to participate in expos where people demand our participation because we can fill certain gaps. Um, so yes, we just need a little bit of warning. My guest is Dr. Erin Kobetz, and she is the Associate Director at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. Well, I'm going to give you the date. It's the Boomer Expo. It's our 22nd, and it's on Saturday, It's on Tuesday, uh, July the 23rd. I believe that's the July 23rd. I have to make sure it's the 22nd or 23rd. I'm, I don't have that in my brain right now. But uh, I would be really very impressed if you could do that. We get about 2,000 people in one day. It's over in Pompano Beach. And I will tell you more about it. This would be... Yes, if you email me <laughs> I information, will. we will I try will. our very best to get there. Right. Um, sometimes on Tuesdays we have, a, like most weeks we have during the week, like a standing community location that we're serving. Mm. But with this kind of notice, we would love to make an exception. We would love to participate in it. And I just need to know more so that I can organize our staff and our response. Sure. This is great. Very thrilled to even talk to you about this. We've had a um, cardiac um, van, a cardiac, and I think we have another one now coming in. I don't remember, but it's a little something new that we haven't done because most of the things happen inside. But it's okay because people loved it. They were kept very busy. And Anything for prevention is important, but especially coming from your exquisite uh, organization, because I know how hard, especially now that you've told us um, how long this has been going on, and, and Mr. Sylvester and his family. I think I was going to have his uh, daughter, I uh, believe, was going to come on our radio show also. Um, so, uh, so, I, so Jane Sylvester yes, Moffatano Jane. is amazing. Yes. <laughs> She's yes. amazing. And... Um, <laughs> I feel really lucky to have known her throughout my entire career and to be inspired by her commitment to fulfilling the vision of her dad. You know, I'm not going to quote him right, but I once read that on the opening of Sylvester that Mr. Sylvester suggested that he wanted our center to be a beacon of hope for all people in South Florida. And I feel like the game changer helps fulfill that vision in a very special and unique way. And I told Jane that. Game Changer is a great name now that I understand when you've told me all this. It is. We all want to we all want a game changer in our lives for something, I'm sure. Uh, I just wanted to go back on this though. So when uh, some this a screening situation that people would would they make an appointment if they know it's going to be a certain time or they just come and they wait in line. So It's a little bit of both. We try to schedule appointments because we have an understanding of vehicle flow, and our goal is not for anybody to be waiting a very long time to be seen and serviced. So our goal is to make appointments ahead of time, and we are about to launch an online scheduler where anyone can go on, pick the location of their choosing, and schedule an appointment depending on their availability. Um, we do also take walk-ins. So if somebody, you know, happens to be in the vicinity of the game changer, they see it and they say, oh, this is a good day for me to think about, you know, getting some education about cancer. We can try to accommodate them to the best of our ability, but they may have to wait slightly because we already have other appointments scheduled. I see. I want to give everyone the website. It's sylvester.org. Is that correct? 
Sylvester. www.sylvester.org. And in terms of um, the game changer, let me tell you exactly what that is because I am not um, familiar with the exact address off the top of my head. But if they went to sylvester.org, wouldn't they then? Yeah, they could find it. Sure. Let, let's, we could just do that. Make it simple. So it's sylvester.org. It's very, very easy to, and now you know the history. Now, just want to ask you one more question about Mr. Sylvester. Was there cancer in his family? Was there a reason why he did this? So that's the part of the story that I don't remember. And um, I feel bad because I wasn't prepared to answer it's okay. that. It doesn't um, matter. Well, I'll, I'll, you know, I mean, I do know that. I, I know that he he dedicated. Uh, he gave the gift in honor of his parents. Oh, okay. Um, I think that he himself was a philanthropic man right. who had a very broad vision for healthcare in South Florida. I know that he was good friends with Jay Weiss. Uh, Jay Weiss was also a large philanthropist who really helped um, shore up the shore up the University of Miami School of Medicine. And together, they had this vision for a cancer center. Yes, I see. And, and I'm not doing good justice to yes, the you details did. of the too. story. You've been <laughs> terrific. Don't, don't even say that. You're terrific. And I've, we've learned so much. Just imagine people here who hadn't the faintest idea about the Sylvester Institute, the Cancer Institute. So you've done a great job. And I can't thank you enough for taking time from your very busy schedule. And I will get you more information. And Look forward to meeting you sometime, Erin. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. And please, please email me about the Boomer Expo. I will. And, um, and I'll get love, your photo also. Show off, we would love to show our game changer off. Oh, yes, definitely. And maybe, you know, I was just thinking, maybe it's so pretty I may even put it. You haven't seen our cover of our magazine, have you? No. I may just wind up. We have a lot of images on the cover. Maybe we'll just put this on the cover. We'll see. I'll talk to you, though, okay? Yes. Aaron, thank, you, thank so you so much, too. Have a great day. You, too. Bye. Bye.